I'm Rachel Conrad with 2 Egg TV, and we're exploring the last remnants of the Battle of Spanish Fort. Spanish Fort is a growing city on the eastern shore of Alabama's Mobile Bay. It's difficult to imagine that men fought and bled for this land in one of the last major battles of the war between the states or Civil War. But if you know where to look, the scars of war are still there. Obviously, the eastern shore of Mobile Bay is a, is a growing uh, area. It's a nice area to live. It's a nice area to visit. And these bluff tops here at Spanish Fort, I mean, this was prime real estate. And so uh, today, much of the battlefield is covered by residential development, uh, by commercial development. Uh, you know, there's stores and shops and people living and doing their daily business on the site where, you know, men fought and bled and died. Uh, over 150 years ago. Trenches snaked through yards and residential areas, the ramparts of forts, and batteries hide behind trees. Sometimes you even find them in the middle of cul-de-sacs. Leaving their bases at the captured citadels of Fort Gaines on Dolphin Island and Fort Morgan on Mobile Point, Union forces moved at the eastern shore of Mobile Bay. Confederate forces skirmished with them, but waited in force at two key points. Spanish Fort, where the Blakely River entered Mobile Bay, and Fort Blakely, six miles upstream. The Union Army got in front of Spanish Fort and realized some pretty significant concentrations of artillery and some pretty significant earthworks were confronting them. And so when they stopped to try to figure out how to approach this thing, you really settle down into a prolonged siege where there's daily fighting, skirmishing, lots of exchanges of artillery fire for well over a week. The Battle of Spanish Fort opened on March 27, 1865, when the Confederate 21st Alabama Infantry ambushed the Union 81st Illinois Infantry. The Federal troops were trying to close in from the northeast after having marched around the heavily fortified southern lines and the Confederates had fortified the bluff top here at Spanish Fort. Uh, they had about 40 pieces of artillery, but the Union Army brought up over 90 cannon, and for 12 days they blasted this position with everything they had. The fighting spread, and the Confederates withdrew into their forts and trenches. Union soldiers started building artillery emplacements like this one, Siege Battery Number 16 from which they soon opened fire on the Confederate lines with cannon and mortars. The Southern soldiers fought back from positions like Fort McDermott, the Red Fort, Battery Blair, and the Sandbag Battery. Traces of these forts still exist along the streets that wind through the residential neighborhoods of Spanish Fort. In a cul-de-sac at the end of Speckle Trout Route, for example, a solitary mound of earth survives to tell the story of the fortifications from which the 1st Division U.S. Colored Troops, or USCT, engaged Confederate warships on the waters below. On a high hill within the Confederate lines stands well preserved Fort McDermott. Its earthen walls survived relentless pounding from Union cannon and are now preserved by the sons of Confederate veterans. Now, there are still some segments of the battlefield that have been preserved. The uh, Sons of Confederate Veterans did a great job of preserving Fort McDermott, or Battery McDermott. Uh, this was an area of the battlefield. You see it here behind me. It's well preserved. These earthworks are here on the highest point of the battlefield, and uh, you can still stop. There's a small parking area by the street in a residential neighborhood. You walk up the hill. There are interpretive signs up here. You can actually see the remains of this fort. Uh, uh, and get a fantastic view of Mobile Bay from up here as well. The end finally came on the evening of April 8, 1865, when the 8th Iowa Infantry broke through the Confederate left. Other Union regiments poured in to support the breakthrough, and General Gibson had no choice but to withdraw his army under the cover of darkness. The, the, what's left of the Spanish Fort Garrison secretly escapes on April 8, 1865 through kind of a back door they had left open. And when the Union Army rushed in, uh, some of the Union troops who walked into this abandoned outpost were still receiving fire from their own guys. They didn't even realize that's the, the Confederates had escaped. That's how complete they managed to affect their escape. When the sun rose on April 9, 1865, the Confederate defenders were gone. 
Only then did the Union commander learn that his opponent had carefully planned an escape route. Canby captured the dirt walls of the Spanish fort, but Gibson and his men were still on the loose. The Confederates on the evening of April 8th knew that the Union Army had breached a part of their lines, a small segment of them. So during the night, they all packed up their things and they slipped away. And the Union Army the next morning was expecting to charge them to take Spanish Fort and its fortifications and capture, kill, or wound all of the men who were defending them. Instead, the Confederates had built a little footbridge across the river, and during the night they all just left and went to a fort or a battery on the other side of the river. Robert E. Lee surrendered that day in Virginia, but the fight in Alabama went on. Battle lines shifted to nearby Fort Blakely, which fell after a desperate battle later in the day. That left Blakely as the lone, lone defensive outpost on the eastern shore. Only a few hundred guys from Spanish Fort managed to make their way up here, and that's because they missed their chance at the transports over to Mobile. But a few of them made it up here, and Blakely then became the object of the entire Union Army on the eastern shore. And that siege that had been mounting for several days uh, became a plan for, uh, a, to take it by storm, and that's what happened on April 9, 1865. Mobile surrendered peacefully to the Union forces on April 12, 1865. The standoff in South Alabama continued for another three weeks until May 4, 1865. Lieutenant General Richard Taylor surrendered the last major Confederate army east of the Mississippi. At Citrona, a railroad community about 30 miles north of Mobile. Spanish Fort today is a bustling community. Residential and commercial developments have spread over much of the battlefield, but the traces of war are still there, if you know where to look. To learn more, please visit Two Egg TV at twoeggflorida.com. In Spanish Fort, Alabama, I'm Rachel Conrad for Two Egg TV.